Hi. This video is about finding the so-called maximal domain of a function. If you are given only the rule for a function, such as these rules here, then the maximal domain is the largest set of values of x for which the rule could be defined. So let's look at question A. So we're asked to find the maximal domain within the real numbers and the corresponding range for this function. So the first thing you can notice is that it has a square root here. And we know that square root is undefined for negative numbers. So this means we need x squared minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. We can also see that this is a denominator here and we can't have a 0 denominator. So we also need a non-zero denominator. And this means that x squared minus 1 must be not equal to 0. Alright, now combining these two requirements, we have that x squared minus 1 must be greater than 0. Or in other words, x squared greater than 1. Or in other words again, x greater than 1 or x less than minus 1. So we can see that our maximal domain is the union of two intervals from minus infinity to minus 1 union with the interval of 1 to infinity. Alright, so let's look at our range now. We'll start by looking at what happens to the function for x values in this interval as they get close to 1. So as x approaches 1 from above, we see that x squared will also approach 1 from above. x squared minus 1 will approach 0 from above. x squared minus 1, the square root of that, will also approach 0 from above. And 1 over that square root will approach infinity because as this denominator gets very small, the fraction itself will get very large. Okay, if we look next to what happens for very large values of x, then as x approaches infinity, x squared approaches infinity, x squared minus 1 approaches infinity, square root of x minus 1 approaches infinity and 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1 approaches 0 from above because as this denominator gets very large then the fraction gets very small. Okay so we can see that f of x takes all the values from 0, excluding 0, up to infinity. So we can see that our range is the interval 0 to infinity. One other thing to point out here is if we take any phase of x in the negative interval here, less than minus 1, then let's say we call it minus x 
then uh, the value of the function for minus x is the same as it is for plus x. So we don't get any new uh, function values by looking at the negative interval here. So that is our range and that completes the question for part A. OK, let's look at part B now. Um, start by rewriting our function rule, which is f of x equals the natural log of tan x. Now for tan x, it'll help to have a look at the graph of, of that function. So I drew one a little earlier. I'll just pop that up there. Now if we take the log of tan of x, now we know the log is defined only for positive values. So we're taking the log of tan of x. So that means we need tan of x greater than 0. Now where is tan of x greater than 0? Well that means we're looking on the graph at the parts of the curve that are above the x-axis. So that's this set of values, this set of values, this set of values, etc. Okay, so that means we need x in one of the intervals from naught to pi on 2 or from pi to 3 pi on 2 or 2 pi to 5 pi on 2 etc. Okay, so that means our maximal domain is the union of all of these intervals. And we can write that as the union of all integers k of the interval k times pi up to k plus a half times pi. Okay, so that's our domain. Now if we look at the range. Now within our domain we see that tan of x is taking up all positive values, so the range of tan x is the interval from 0 to infinity. Now we want the log of tan x. Let's just draw a quick graph of the log function. So 0 there on the x-axis. We'll put y up here. Now the log function looks something like this. It cuts the x-axis at 1. It goes off to infinity in that direction and minus infinity down in this direction. And so tan x is taking up all values on the positive x-axis. So that means the log is taking up all values from minus infinity up to plus infinity. So all real values. So that means we can write our range as R, the set of all real numbers. Okay, and that completes the question for part B. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment below. And thanks for watching.